company rules. You should have it in the same pack, can they? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and this is this is um, if you look at the requirement there, calculate the tax implications of the above transactions. And it says tax implications, okay? It doesn't say the closed company implications, it's looking for all the tax implications. That means for the director and for the the company as well. Okay, so Holly Limited is owned by Nick Jones, Paul Jones, and Pat Burke. Okay, so 25%, 45%, and 30%. So it's a closed company because it's it's owned by over by five people and they're controlling over 50% of the the company if you put their percentages together. High Limited manufactures and sells kitchens in Ireland. Dur during the year in December 2012, Holly Limited made the following transactions. So Holly Limited transferred a property worth 200000 to Pat Burke's son for 10000 on the 15th of June 2012. It cost the company 50000 on the 16th of January 2004. So this is what they're examining is a transfer of an asset at under value. Okay, so transfer an asset at under value. And if you want to cross-reference that back to your notes, it is on page five of the closed company notes. Okay, so page five of the closed company notes. The transfer of an asset at an under value. And it just it just wants to just to, to, uh, look over them there. Just um, it's the implications for the company are CT on the deemed disposal of the asset, DWT is paid on the deemed distribution, and the base cost of the company shares is reduced by the amount of the asset being transferred. The implications for the individual schedule F income tax payable at the marginal rate, stamp duty may be at two percent, may be VAT on property, and may be capital acquisitions tax. But we'll have to worry about just the Schedule F income tax from there. Okay, that's all they're actually looking for is the Schedule F <coughs> for the implications of the individual. Oh, and just forget, John said as well, if you want to get the access to the lectures for after, just give them a text and you have to have a Gmail account to, to get them. Alright? Just to. <laughs> you think it's still there? I'm hopeful. Yeah. 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 Sorry. It's hard to know because it's staring at that. Oh, yeah, yes, so it's this. static. Yeah. Okay, so our transfer and assets at under value. Okay, so we're going to do a little capital gains tax computation for it. Okay, to see what was the, what should have been the tax on it. Okay, we will have a DWT to be paid as well. Okay. As a distribution, and then the son will have to pay dividend withholding tax and return it under Schedule F. Okay, so this is question, this is question six, all of 2012. Okay, and it's Holly, isn't it, Holly? Mm -hmm. Holly Limited. And it's transfer of an asset at under value. Okay, so I'm doing the capital gains tax computation. Okay, so capital gain tax implication. Okay, proceeds are. Even though they got ten thousand for it, it's the market value, and the market value is two hundred thousand. It costs the company fifty thousand. So we've got costs in January two thousand and four, and there's no indexation in two thousand and four. So it's the fifty thousand will be taken off of that. Bring us down to. <coughs> 
because it's a corporation tax charge we gain, we're going to have to multiply by, uh, what's yeah. three? Sure by 12 and a half. Okay, we're going to have to revalue it. Okay, so divide by 12 and a half and then multiply by 33, which comes up to 396,000. Okay, and I said if you want to check it, if you multiply the 296,000 by 12.5%, you get 49,500. And if you multiply the 150,000 by 33%, you get 49,500. Okay, so your charge of the gain is going to be, so in your tax computation, 396,000. Is that alright yet? Yeah? Okay, the, that's the first implication. The second <coughs> implication will be the distribution. Okay, and the distribution will be the 200,000 proceeds minus 10,000 to give. So the distribution will be on 190,000. So it will be <coughs> the 200,000. Minus the 190, which is, sorry, what? Is minus the 10, which brings us down to the top, 190. Okay, that 190 is by 20%, which is that top 2,000. Okay, that's the tax implications for the company. Plus the last one is Sorry, the, the thirty eight thousand that's your DWG, is it? Yeah, the thirty eight thousand, yeah. <coughs> so that's we'll get over to the the <coughs> revenue. And say it was the fifteenth, or they say the fifteenth of June, we say two thousand and fourteen for our exam, has to get over to the revenue by the fourteenth of July, two thousand and fourteen. So it's the 14th day of the month after the distribution. And so the third thing there is the base cost of the company's shares is reduced by the amount of the asset being transferred. That's our third implication. Base cost of shares. Amount of distributions in it of the assets, sorry, amount of assets. Okay, in this case, it could be the 190 again because the asset value is 200. We actually got 10 for it, so it would be 190,000. Our shares are actually going to be. Reduce by. And if I to show up then, it would be 190,000, right? So it would be 190,000 by 25% for make.
and 109,000 by what's left? 30% for Pat. Okay, and there are shares actually go down by that much. So 190,000 by 25% is 57,000 and 85,000. Okay, and then the implications for him. For who got it? Pat Brock's son. They don't tell us who he is. So for Pat Brock's son. For Pat Brock's son will be a schedule F. Yeah, well, there could be a uh, stamp duty. We could put a stamp duty if you want. A stamp duty of 2%. 1% and rest it doesn't tell us what it is. So if you want to put in there a stamp duty, 2% or 1%. It depends on the Yeah, if it was residential, it would be 1%. If it was um, commercial. commercial, it would be. And how long does he have to pay it? Until the end of his own tax year. Yeah, yeah. So that that say was that that's June 14. So it's like June 4. It's like 2014 tax return. He put in 190, not 190,000. Sorry, two percent is commercial. Is this? Two percent commercial. One percent is residential. <coughs> and he only gave the the schedule F here. Just for the what they gave the marks for it is about uh, it's 20 marks. They gave four marks for the working out the game on top. So four marks for this calculation, four marks for doing the distribution, and there was four marks for saying what the implication of Pat Broxton was, and for the shares reducing that's all the four marks. So there's four marks for his implications, four marks for the four marks, charge of the game. Four marks for charge of the game, four marks for doing distribution, the 190,000. Was it the charge of the game calculating 150 or calculating 49 and a half? Calculating 38,000, sorry, 49 and a half. Yeah, that was four marks for that. Then four marks for calculating the 190,000 by 20%. And it was four marks for the rest of it as well, for doing the shares and doing his schedule F. That was all four marks. That, that was all four marks, that one level did. Did you say 20 marks all together? Yeah, because eight marks for the next part of it, no. Does that too bad, just not? But the thing was to see that it was the, the second the rule, what, you had, what rule you were actually looking for. You know, of the post companies. <coughs> and the second part, Holly Limited has rented income of 15,000 for the year in the 31st of December and pays dividend of 2,000 on the 15th of January. Okay, so the, his rental income, the rental income anyway, will be something to tax at 25%. <coughs> okay, the rental income. Tax 
comments and patience, so why is it just not show that is why they don't like more coming stuff in there, but just for that. That would be case five, then. That would be case five, yeah. And so when they give you a pay as during the 2000, what they're getting at there is the closed company surcharge, but because that's, this is rental income, which is, you know, the, the not your trading income, but the, the passive income, and it's during the 2000 euro, so it's actually the closed company surcharge they're actually getting at there. So your closed company surcharge, now we've got the eighth step plan. Yeah, on page eight. Yeah, so on page eight. And you see, Joe, step one, okay. Step, step one is your, your total income. Step two is your estate income. And step three is Joe putting one over the other and stuff. But if there's no losses or, um, Anything there, can we just go straight in and actually list your your three cases of case three, case four, case five? Do you know what I mean? If your total income is 100,000 and there's no losses, there's no trade charges to be worried about, just go straight in and just list your schedules of income. That's going to be the exact same figure between step one and step three. And I showed that there when we're actually doing another one. So our, we're actually looking at our 15,000 rental income.
Because just like it just seems like we do all that work above for four marks or like why even eight marks for yeah. So I definitely do that and do the rental income and then <laughs> like that underneath. There's no if one went down underneath the question, no closed company surcharge on undistributed income. Okay, so no sort no closed company surcharge on undistributed income. as the distribution calculated on the undervalue of assets is treated as a distribution. Going, 
the A down to C and then C across to B. So that means what? That's it's over 75. It's over 75 for A and B. So, so A and B are a last group. And these lasses can be used to help C? Can, no, can be used to help A. And C? No, C, because C only owns 30% of B. But because A <coughs> owns 88% overall, they can be transferred to C? No. No, because A only owns 60% of C. It doesn't own 100% of it. Oh. Yeah. They have to own 75% of that result. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So C is the parallel group at all? C, no. C is the C is on its own, and A and B are in a, a last group. Let's see what do they say here. Yeah, it says A limited and B limited as indirectly A limited on 70 or owns 88% to B, 70% plus the 18% through C. Okay, that's for our I'm worried about I'm worried about capital gains tax, we're doing capital gains tax. I'm gonna worry about part B there, the five marks. So it's five marks for actually figuring out that. And, they, and that's what they gave five marks. Just for one, for that answer. For one liner. For one liner, yeah. So I'm just, have you highlighted there a minute and I just highlight that too and I'll ask him. It just seems like a lot of marks. Well, I suppose it's vital. It's vital, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I just want to make sure you mean that is it across the board like oh, that you can get five marks? <laughs> yeah, because the answers there could be totally different to what the examiner. Oh, the examiner. <coughs> yeah, that's it. Just wanted to make sure. But if you get that, that five marks wrong, the whole question's going to be wrong. Yeah, because like if you if you if you if you figure out figure out that there was no that you if you didn't look at the sixty by the thirty, you'd say there was none of the last group to A is losses couldn't be transferred over to anyone. So at the moment A's losses can be transferred over to B. B. You just have to look at the arrows Yeah, the two but the arrows are going. Yeah. Should I just that, right? Do you have you been talking to any of the previous lecturers who had students go through? No, John has already been done. Just to see what they said. Do you know like because they went into coaching even last year like or whatever? No, I have no what to see what the IAPA or whatever do. I, I, I let the chance to question it. Mm -hmm. I, I know someone did the exam as best I came up 12 years ago. I don't know what it was like back then. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we do the calculation for that. So I do C first because C is going to be an ordinary computation. Okay, so question one on this <coughs> is. <coughs> Sorry? Okay, so we've got Schedule D, Case 1, 51,000. She's your very fast typer. So that's our 51,000 and you've got case 5, 2,000 
and we've got capital allowances of 3. So I'll use 2 against my case 5. And the other 1,000 then, I'm going to use against my total profits. So I'd better take it off of the, the 51 to bring my income down to 50. Okay, so I'll just show it separately. I go total income. 51,000. And the capital allowance is of 3 or 2? 2. Um, it's 3, but 2 will be taken off of your case 5, and then the 1 will be taken off. Yeah, turn it down here. Okay, so my excess case 5 capital allowance are taken off of my total profits. Schedule D case one is going to be zero. I'm going to set up a little last memo for the 100 thousand. <coughs> Is that alright? Yeah? And I'm going to do a section 396B value basis claim here now. <clears throat> I 
So I want to see, for this 3750, how much of my case one glass I need to shelter it. So it will be up to a glass in the middle. Okay, and then section 396. Value basis. To my computation and I put up with my where is my AP. So it is thirty thousand by twelve and a half percent is three seven five oh so I have a and then corporation tax I finish it. to be limited now. Group brief then is it full 25, is it? Sorry? Group brief then is full 25,000. The full 25,000, yeah. So it's like my last bit I'm going to have available 70,000 less my group relief 25 bring me down to 45. that and the value basis in group relief. So I'm going to see how much I need to shelter that 2,000 euro worth of corporation tax. So you need to go back over to your last memo. Okay, and it'll be 2,000. Oh, 
It's like Section 396 yeah. 1, the last little piece there. It's always against your case 1. Yeah, we carry it forward, it's only against the same drain as it can be because square root loss of Yeah, that's it, yeah. And you come properly and just take it off. Yeah. Yeah. 